Hi, I'm Laura, aka the Crypto Tax Girl. I'm a CPA and I've helped over 200 clients calculate their crypto gain and loss reports, so I just wanted to teach you a few tricks that I've learned along the way. In this tutorial, we're going to be using coin tracking, so if you don't have an account, use the link below to get 10% off. Even if you do have an account, still use the link below because it's going to give you 10% off any of your current or future subscriptions. Alright, let's dive in. All right, so when you open coin tracking, it's gonna look something like this. If you haven't entered anything yet, um, you'll just see a lot of zeros, no information. So that means it's time to import all of your data. Um, you should have either a pro or unlimited up here in the top. If you're using the free version, I'd recommend that you upgrade now. And if you just go to cryptotaxgirl.com slash coin tracking, it'll give you 10% off. Um, but if you don't use the pro or unlimited version, you have a lot of limitations and one of them is not being able to use the APIs. and APIs are essential here. For example, um, if we go look at Coinbase, um, you can see in this little graphic here that if you use CSVs instead of APIs to import all your coin tracking or your Coinbase data, then you'll be missing out on deposits and withdrawals. And you'll see later why those are so important. So I recommend using the APIs as much as possible. Even if you're using another exchange, like for example, right here, Binance, you'll see that both the CSVs and the APIs work. Um, it has all the full data for either one. I still recommend using the APIs because then it'll have real-time data and every time you lo log into coin tracking, it'll have all your information in there. Every time you do a trade, it'll show up and you don't have to regularly download CSVs and um, pull those into, your, into coin tracking. It'll just help you get the most out of the system. Um, you'll notice too, like some exchanges, for example, Gemini here, they're not listed under the APIs. So you have to just do the CSVs, but the most important thing is to just get all of your wallets and um, all of your exchanges uploaded in here. Even if you have wallets that you didn't trade on, like for example, like a My Ethereum wallet or some sort of Bitcoin paper wallet, if you have a wallet that you've just been storing coins in, but you didn't do trades, they still need to be uploaded for accounting purposes. Um, again, you'll see later why that's so important, but you can do that all here. Um, for example, if we click on the ETH wallet import, you can just put your ETH wallet address in here and then import all your transactions. Um, if you have an Exodus, Trezor, Mycelium, it'll provide instructions on how to do that and you can import it here. But um, the first important step is just, just to make sure that all of your information is in here. I'm not gonna teach you exactly how to do all of that right now. Um, again, you can learn that in my course later if you want more details, but what I want you to do is to import all of your data, use those APIs where you can, make sure you have every single thing in here, and then um, we'll move on to the next step. So pause quickly and then let's move on. All right, so I have gone ahead and now updated all of my exchange data, all of my wallet information. It's all in here in one place. So hopefully you've done the same. Um, so after you have it in here, you'll notice in the corner, it'll prompt you to recalculate. So always when you add new information, you wanna make sure that you recalculate so that everything's up to date. So you just click on that, wait for it to update, give it a sec. Um, all right, so everything now looks like it's up to date. So we're gonna click back up here on enter coins and just go to overview and manual import. Um, so here's your transaction data. You'll see here that I have 150 entries. This is just um, obviously a simple example. You'll probably have more than this. You know, maybe you'll have less, but um, doesn't matter how big your transaction history is, even if I have clients with 100,000 transactions, I still do the same process. Um, so once you're in here, we're actually going to take this information elsewhere. So in order to do that, we want to click here on date, and that'll now show our transactions going the opposite way from oldest to newest, and that's just a little bit easier to reconcile. Um, so then you're gonna export it to CSV, and if you have um, Excel on your computer, now would be a good time to um, open that. If not, you can just use Google Sheets. That works fine. And then um, file, import, and then we're going to upload. And then you can actually put that file we just downloaded right here. Um, click insert new sheet, and then we're going to import the data. So now you'll see everything that is in coin tracking is now over here in Excel. Um, so let's filter it. If you're not good at Excel, don't worry. Just do create a filter, and that'll create a filter along the top and then view and just freeze the first row so that even if we scroll, we still have that first row um, there for us. Now we're gonna take out the trade so we only have deposits and withdrawals. And like I said earlier, deposits and withdrawals are really important and so now you're gonna see why. So press okay. 
And then um, we don't need to worry about USD because it's not a cryptocurrency. Again, if you have another fiat, you'd wanna take that out now. Make sure you're only working in one fiat though. So let's say you have like pounds and euros in there. You wanna make sure everything's converted to one currency. So if you have Canadian dollars and US dollars, you wanna go through all those Canadian dollar um, transactions, convert them to USD so you only have one. Um, so let's take that out. And then over here, we're gonna do the same. We have one. So now we're only looking at crypto. And what I want you to do now is go through your own transaction history and match up all the withdrawals and deposits so that they have a matching counterpart. So you can see here that this uh, Bitcoin, it went out of Coinbase and then into my Bitcoin wallet. So um, if you upload a Bitcoin wallet address or any other um, coin address, it'll show here as Bitcoin transaction, or you can see here there's Litecoin transaction. Um, so these ones look good. So we're gonna highlight those in green because you know we don't have to worry about those. Those have a matching counterpart. Um, this five Bitcoin, unfortunately, does not have a matching counterpart. So let's highlight that in red. Um, six, six, those match. Um, so that you wanna go through all of your data and do that process. Um, so I'm not gonna show you how to do all of those right now, but I'm just gonna show you a few examples. So what you wanna do is identify all the ones in red and then come back through and reclassify them in coin tracking so that either it has a matching counterpart or the transaction has been reclassified. So for this one, for example, um, the five Bitcoin, we're gonna just copy and paste this date so that we can find this transaction. So if we come back into uh, coin tracking, so I'm gonna paste that date here and now you have um, this deposit. So click on that and then click edit. And this actually, um, this was income that I received. I worked for someone and they paid me five Bitcoin for what I did. So I'm just gonna reclassify that to income. And then if you go here to edit asset value, you'll see here that the value of five Bitcoin at that time when I received the payment was um, $2,187.95 in USD. And so that means that I'm gonna have to include $2,185. Uh, $2,187 as income on my tax return. But it is able to look up all the values for that so you don't have to go look it up yourself. Um, so I'm just gonna click update. And now you'll see that this has been changed to income. So I can change this now back to green because I've now like taken care of this. Um, so now we have some Litecoin transactions that don't have matching counterparts. Um, these Bitcoin ones match, so I'm gonna highlight those. But these Litecoin ones, we need to figure out what to do with them. Um, and actually I mined Litecoin back in 2016, so that's why they're showing up like that. So I'm gonna again copy and paste this and then go back into my coin tracking and I'm gonna paste that and I'm gonna change this now to mining. So edit, um, change this to mining and the same thing, you can see the value here is um, four US dollars. So I'm gonna have to include that mining income as income on my tax return. Um, it's only $4, it seems small, but I was mining a lot, so they all add up together, and I have to include that as income, slash it also becomes my cost basis. So I'll click update there, and then go back to this sheet, and just keep going through. So for every transaction, you want to find um, a matching counterpart, and if you can't, then you have to update it so that it has a counterpart. So like, I'm just going to run through one more example. Um, this dash, you can see right here, none of it has a matching counterpart. And that's because actually I transferred this to a Ledger Nano wallet, but I forgot to input that um, earlier because if you notice right here under coin tracking, enter coins, when I went to wallet import, imports, there was no Ledger Nano import. So I just, I forgot about it. So let's put that in now. So I'm going to go find that transaction and paste that in there and edit that. And so this was a withdrawal and we have to show that there was a matching deposit into Ledger Nano. So we're gonna change this to transfer. So you'll see right here, outgoing Binance and then incoming was Ledger Nano. We're gonna update that. So now you'll see both counterparts. So now that one's been fixed. So I can highlight that one in green. Um, so that's basically the process is go through all of your transactions Make sure that everything has a matching counterpart. And then after you do that, um, we're gonna go through and pull the tax report. But I'm not gonna show you how to do everything um, right here. Again, like I said, this is all kind of detailed and I walk through how to do all of this in the course. We talk about ICOs, um, how to do shapeshift income, how to um, 
ender trades that may not be, you know, that you might not have the exchange history for anymore or wallets that you might not have access to. We talk about all of that in my video. So take a look at that. But um, after you have everything in here, you want to, again, review the summary to make sure that everything is um, looking correct. All your current holdings are accurate to what you're actually holding. And if you want to see a more detailed breakdown, you can go under reporting and click on balance by exchange. And we'll have to recalculate because we just uh, made some changes. And I actually haven't gone through and updated all of my transactions yet. So this isn't accurate yet, but in the end it should be accurate. So all of these holdings should be equal to what I'm holding on Binance and same with Bittrex and same with all, all of my exchanges and all of my wallets. Um, if there's a negative USD value, like you'll see here in Coinbase, um, USD obviously isn't a cryptocurrency, so we don't have to worry about that one. You can just pass on it but all of your cryptos should um, have a positive balance. So like this EOS one, I still need to fix. Um, but in the end, they, those all should be accurate. And if they are, then you're gonna go to tax report and pull the tax report. So in the video, I'm gonna teach you exactly how to pull the tax report. And um, there's a few nuances and things that you need to change and then how to go and report it on your tax return. But the main thing I wanted to teach you here was just how to reconcile, how to find those issues in your tax return and figure out why the balances might not be correct it always comes down to withdrawals and deposits. So make sure that all of these are accurate. And if they are, then you can go and pull your tax report. All right, hopefully that helped get you started. But if you wanna learn more, please go to cryptotaxgirl.com slash learn, where I'm gonna teach you how to reconcile all the information. And I go a lot more into detail, I teach you how to enter ICOs, masternodes, staking, how to input wallets and exchanges that aren't necessarily supported by coin tracking, and then how to take all that information, put it together, pull the tax report and then go and report it on your tax return and have documentation in the case you're ever audited. So if you really wanna learn more and make sure that everything balances and looks good, you can report it on your tax return correctly, just go to cryptotaxgirl.com learn. Thanks for checking this out.